when, when you and I talked our first conversation, I still remember you said, I think it was our current third and fourth graders will be the first one to Mars. That's right. At that age. Why couldn't it be one of my kids? This is Andy Aldrin. I'm the president of the Aldrin Family Foundation, where our mission is to bring the inspiration of space into the classroom. We've We've been distributing giant maps of the moon and Mars that include books, rovers, augmented reality. But I think the most important thing we do in, in developing our programs is we sit down with the administrators, the curricula experts, the science education experts, and come up with ways of kind of adapting our curriculum so it's meeting exactly what the, the needs of the district are. And, and what we do with the foundation is we bring the inspiration to space. But Really, the focal point has to be the district leadership. To me, it's it's the thinking uh, outside of the box, hands-on activities for our children. That's where you see their minds is there on the map. You see their mind just moving so fast. I can see my kids finding ways to be engaged in science and reading and math in different ways that will be able to accelerate their learning. One of the challenges of this custom work is finding topics and texts that are really engaging for students and also facilitate improvement in their literacy skills, including reading and writing and, and conversation about text. And so PCG is currently partnering with districts like Chicago Public Schools to build fully custom pre-K to 12 English language arts curriculum. And now what's exciting is in partnership with the Aldrin Foundation, that will include units of instruction that leverage the excitement of space exploration to build students' literacy skills. And, and one of the things that we've seen is by working in English language arts versus the traditional science or STEM areas, we aren't competing for time with other science topics, and we can actually truly engage students in the excitement of, the excitement of space while improving critical literacy skills at the same time. You know, we were we were talking about how space can bring inspiration to the classroom. And you said, you know, we spend a lot of time teaching the kids what we want to teach. We need to spend some more time teaching one that teaching them what they want to learn. So I think this is a golden opportunity for us to uh, expand the curriculum in, uh, for space exploration, but also uh, create interest in the math and science other than just the what kids call boring uh, 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 stuff. Real problems and, and, and exciting problems in space, on Mars, on the moon, and, and you kind of force kids to do the math and science. It gets to be fun. Oftentimes, uh, in many subjects, that hands-on application, real-world relevancy is missing. And uh, in talking with teachers, that was one of the number one aspects of this project that they were really, really excited about. What I love about um, utilizing space is that it's not just a frontier. It's like here and now. It's in our news. Um, we can talk social studies, like how are we going to do geography on the main? Like who's what country um, has what area of the moon? Um, we also can talk about other types of entrepreneurship um, as a asteroid mining. We talk about all types of careers. Um, a lot of the students at the middle schools, um, other than astronauts, other than engineers, we need everything, the plethora of different vocations to go to the moon and then use that to advance to going to Mars. Can you make space exploration a reality, something that's reachable for some of your students who would never consider it as a possibility. You see, I don't have a problem inspiring students who already have a family that may have taken them uh, right. actually to see uh, the complex at the Space Center. I don't have a problem inspiring them and helping them see themselves uh, as future astronauts and potentially being a part of the, the mission control that gets all of the particulars taken care of for an actual space launch. I don't even have problems inspiring some of them that if we have more and more civilian uh, space travel, that they might someday be a part of that kind of colonization, if you will. Where we have our challenges 
is to make some of our children who have very different backgrounds believe that it can be a part of their dream. There are middle school kids who have built satellites that are flying in space. And, and I don't think it's, it's difficult to conceive of developing programs where your kids probably in high school could actually develop and fly satellites. And if that's not bringing it to the entire, you know, in, in any of your schools, if that's not bringing home the, the, the meaning of space to you on the ground, to your students, uh, I just, it's a magical time to do all of this. I wanna thank you, Dr. Jenkins, so much for taking the time. I, um, I'm i inspired by you word speak because it's it's very much the spirit of what we're trying to do. And and for those out there, please, you know, get in touch with us. Look at what we've got at aldernfoundation.org. Thank you very much for the time. I really, really, really look forward to working with you in your district. Thank you. Thank you.